This video will be talking about the process of neurulation. This is a process by which the neural tube forms and this is the blueprint for the human brain. One of the major events in the third week is the gastrulation. That means the formation of three different germ layer. So let us begin our journey from this particular stage. So from the epiblast, three different germ layers are formed, namely ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. From these three germ layers, ectoderm is the layer which would form the central nervous system and the brain. Mesoderm and endoderm forms other uh, systems. So here we need to focus on ectoderm. Now the major event that happens at the end of the third week is the neural induction, which is the key sub process within the neurulation. So in this case, the primitive node induces the overlapping new ectoderm to form the neural plate or neuroectoderm. So obviously neur the neural tube is actually derived from the ectoderm. The entire nervous system is derived from the ectoderm. The notochord actually induces formation of these ectoderm to become neuroectoderm. And that's the rudimentary nervous system. So this is around day 18. This is how the embryo look like from a top view. So this is the cranial end and this is the caudal end around day 21. So you can see this nowhere looks like a brain at that this particular point of time. But believe me, eventually this would give rise to the embryonic brain. So the ectoderm which is present on both the sides of this midline would eventually close like this particular arrow direction and it would form the neural tube. At around day 22, one can clearly see the middle proportion of these uh, sheet is actually closed and formed a tube. But both ends of this particular sheet is not closed properly yet. So these are known as cranial neuropore and the caudal neuropore. Eventually, in order to form the tube, these two portions need to be closed properly. At around day 24, the cranial neuropore should be closing and in this closing procedure there are nutrients which are super important such as the folic acid or vitamin b9 without vitamin b9 this closure cannot happen and that is why folic acid deficiency is detrimental folic acid is required in the first month of the pregnancy before even sometimes the woman won't, won't know that she is pregnant but folic acid is really important for the neural tube closure. So the cranial neuropore closes around day 24 and the caudal neuropore closes around day 28 approximately. And if this closure doesn't happen properly, then it might lead to problems like anencephaly or spina bifida. Both are neural tube defects which lead to severe defects in the nervous system. That is why every woman who wants to conceive should consider taking 400 micrograms of folic acid on a daily basis. And it's true because if you look at the global map, the third world countries are more affected where vitamin or mineral or nutrition is a big problem. Whereas the incidence of neural tube defects are less common in case of the developed world. Now, if the cranial end of the neurotube fails to uh, close, there are many defects like anencephaly. The baby is born without the significant part of its brain. Then there is inencephaly, which leads to an extreme retroflexion of the head. There is also known as there are there are defects also known as an en enencephaliol, which is very hard to pronounce. But anyway, in this case. The, in the case of encephalocil, the sac is basically a sac like protrusion is found in the back of the head. There is also another defect which is very hard to pronounce but known as craniorecascasis. In this case what happens is the entire brain, cranial vault, spinal cord, everything is absent. This is very severe, the babies doesn't survive. The less severe forms happens when there is a defect in the caudal end closing. There could be open and close form of spina bifida, where there are protrusion of the spinal column, either uh, the nerve or the skin is exposed in the backside of the baby. 
so all these things happens due to the deficiency of uh, vitamin b12 and defects in neural tube closure now let's look at the neural tube closure from a cross-sectional view now we are not looking at the embryo from the top view we are looking at it from the cross-sectional view here are the three germ layers and mind that this is the notochord notochord secretes several factors morphogens importantly sonic hedgehog these things actually induce the ectoderm which is just above it and this ectoderm is now termed as neuroectoderm this is still an ectoderm but these cells has different properties different adhesion properties among themselves different molecular markers so this is the region which eventually give rise to the neural tube so this particular region is also known as neural plate and this formation or this induction is happening within the time period of day 18 to day 20. now after that a groove would be formed this particular groove that you can see here is known as the neural groove because the neural plate begins to invaginate and this forms a dimple a groove in the center that is the neural groove eventually two sides of this neural groove would come closer and closer till the point it fused together to form the neural tube now you can see the neural tube formation is almost done and at this particular point at around day uh, 28 this should be complete and at this point of time one can see this is the neural tube which would eventually give rise to central nervous system brain and the spinal cord and this is the neural crest cells these are specialized group of cells which are capable of giving rise to many cell types including cells of the peripheral nervous system in a different video we'll talk about the neural crest cells in details but right now we are focusing on the process of neurulation so this was the overview about neurulation now we are going to delve into the cellular details of neurogenesis so this is the top view and the cross-sectional view together so this is the neural plate induction the neural groove formation eventually neural groove the edges of the neural groove come close to each other till the time they fuse and this is how the neural tube is generated now if you don't understand this process so far let me give you an analogy of a paper so roughly our nervous system which is formed from the neural tube is basically a pipe a pipe with disproportionate diameter at different locations so you can imagine the brain side is a thicker pipe whereas the spinal cord is a, a thinner pipe anyway it's a pipe so in that case the development happens from a sheet so how do you make a pipe from a sheet you have to curl the pipe uh, curl the sheet to form the pipe so imagine you're folding this particular sheet and forming this tube and exactly that what happens in the neural tube development so this is the fundamental of neurulation now let's get back to the cellular details so this is the neural tube which is already uh, the folding happened the closure happened now if we zoom into the neural tube we would see there are cell types which are known as neuroepithelial cells these neuroepithelial cells are actually stem cells which has the capability of self-renewal they divide and give rise to daughter cells which are exactly identical and these neuroepithelial cells are actually giving rise to the neurons but in a sequential fashion so this is how it happens so neuroepithelial cells are the precursors for the radial glia so eventually neuroepithelial cells would change their shape and size their adhesion properties and become radial glial cells so these neuroepithelial cells and radial glial cells look quite different as the picture shows not only that these neuroepithelial cells are undifferentiated and they are lining the entire neural tube and they are they are stem cells they are stem in nature whereas the radial glial cells are one type of specialized neuroepithelial cell they also have the stem cell like property but they can give rise they can either divide symmetrically or asymmetrically as well now these neural uh, epithelial cells or radial glial cells in the human brain shows a typical cell migration behavior 
and this cell migration behavior is known as interkinetic nuclear movement in order to understand the process of interkinetic move uh, cell movement or the cell division during the uh, generation of these radial glial cells we have to take a step back and try to understand this dynamic process now we are looking at one section of the early embryonic brain and at that point of time of development you can see the brain looks pretty smooth from the beginning of the uh, development the brain is not convoluted and guidified it is initially smooth eventually guidification happens so now you can see these cells which are radial glial cells and look how these cell bodies change their position with respect to the ventricular surface and the pl surface while they divide they divide into two radial glia eventually these two radial glia are each able to divide and give rise to more radial glia so this is how the radial glia are actually moving up and down during this particular uh, process of neurulation now let us try to understand this process in bit more details so this is how our radial glia look like in the interphase so this is the G1 phase. You can note the cell body of the radial glia is up above from the ventricular surface. It is quite above the ventricular surface. The, at the S phase, it is quite close to the PL surface. But from G1, from G2 phase, these cell bodies start descending downwards. You can see at pro-metaphase and even at metaphase, the cell bodies are exactly touching the ventricular surface. So this is one peculiar um, movement that happens during this process. So the metaphasic cell bodies exactly lines to the ventricle when they are about to divide. So this metaphasic uh, particular radial glia would eventually touch the ventricular surface. It would undergo anaphase and eventually cytokinesis. Then ultimately it would give rise to two daughter cells. Each of these daughter cells can divide symmetrically in the initial phase of the nervous system development. The divisions are more symmetric. That leads to a more number of stem cells. This is known as transit amplification. That means if you have, uh, you have, you have to invest somewhere, you have to first amplify your money. This is how nervous system increase the number of stem cells before giving rise to the neurons. So now these radial glial progenitors which are born from the mother now would extend their processes towards the PL surface. Again, the same division process would repeat. You can see the cell bodies are now moving towards the ventricular surface and the M phase happens when they touch the ventricular surface and now they divide and give rise to again other daughter cells. This is how the overall process of uh, self renewal division takes place in the initial portion of the nervous system, in initial time point of the nervous system. Now, after a point of time when there are substantial number of neuronal stem cells, then it's time to give rise to neuron. This process is known as neurogenesis. In this case, the radial glia can give rise to neurogenic division. So they can give rise to one neuron marked here in green and one radial glia. So this is an asymmetric division instead of a symmetric division. Now when the time progresses, after a point of time, after giving rise to substantial number of neurons, the radial glial progenitor would eventually produce glial cells, such as the astrocytes. How this temporal coordination is regulated in the brain is still debatable and a big question. But the key essence of gliogenesis and the neurogenesis is time and external and internal influences. Now this is a particular timeline which would quickly summarize the process of cell birth in the uh, brain development uh, process. So here is gestational week. You can see the new relation happens at very early stage within the five, fifth week of the uh, uh, gestation. Then there is neurogenesis, there is microglial invasion. Microglia are not born from neuronal stem cells. They are coming from the mesodermal lineage. They innervate the brain. Then there is astrogliogenesis. And after astrogliogenesis, there is oligodendrogenesis. And synaptogenesis happens somewhere around gestational week 16 and continues even after the birth. And it is modified or synapse genesis is modified based on experience and external stimuli. 
Now let us quickly look at some terminology. At around GW3 or gestational week 3, this is the basic blueprint of the brain. You can see the, the red portion is known as the forebrain or prosencephalon, the green portion is known as the mesencephalon and the yellow portion is known as the hindbrain or the rhombencephalon. So this is the broad demarcation of the three regions in the brain. Now at around GW7, we can see that there would be further uh, subdivision of these regions. For example, prosencephalon would give rise to telencephalon and diencephalon. Rhombencephalon give rise to metencephalon and myelencephalon. So now we can understand complication and more intricate architecture is building up as the time progresses. At around GW12, telencephalon give rise to cerebral hemispheres which are responsible for higher cognitive processing and function. Diencephalon forms and give rise to the structures like thalamus and hypothalamus which are involved in sensory processing, homeostasis etc. Then in the rhombencephalon, metencephalon give rise to structures like pons and cerebellum which are essential for motor coordination and fine-tuning balance. Then Myelencephalon actually give rise to medulla oblongata which is involved in autonomic functions like breathing, heart rate control, etc. So now we understand how the nervous system is getting from simple to complicated. Now this particular stage of formation of these specific re region, uh, region is known as vesicularization. So basic vesicles are forming in the brain which would eventually be uh, regionalized into specific brain region. So this kind of summarize our overall idea about neurulation. Eventually we would focus on corticogenesis that how cortex is formed how telencephalic or diencephalic development takes place from this stage and that happens within a long period of time with the influence of external and internal factors many cells are interplaying with each other with the signaling pathways to make it happen this is not a simple process but i hope this video was simple enough to understand if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up get more notes and flashcards in our instagram and facebook page you can support our channel using paypal paytm or upi see you in next video